Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey everybody, welcome, it's the Ramble, there in yellow and in red, that's me, that's Alex, and we'll be here until midnight tonight. Look who we have here, once again, it's Santa Claus. Yeah. That's yeah, Chuck Barnum. I keep thinking about shaving, maybe. Maybe just shave half of it off. Now, when I knew you, did you have a beard? I don't think so. Not really. I don't. Uh, well, it came and went from high school till about the late '80s, maybe early '90s. I didn't shave. Yeah. And then I shaved once, and it's a lot of work. Yeah. Well, this is Chuck Farnham, who was an old friend, he used to be a regular on our radio program. Actually, a paid regular, right? Yeah, I was. I don't, uh, there was money to be made. Did they pay you per visit, or did they pay you? Mm -hmm. per, uh, monthly. Monthly. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah it, a real, it was like a real job. Was it a decent amount of money? Yeah, it was fine. It was all I needed. Because I, I stopped to think the other day about, realistically, how much money that station made off of me. This yeah, is Live uh, 105. And I don't think they ever told me exactly how much I, I would was, guess not because they because then when it comes time to you know renew the contract I would screw them for a lot of money right but we, we were making them a lot of money yeah no I I didn't realize that at first I didn't understand the business of radio because that wasn't my thing and then I looked into it and kind of like was kind of wondering you know all of a sudden all of a sudden you're wandering the street in San Francisco and I'm just a you know buffoon and people are going, Oh, I was listening to you this morning when you use your credit card or something. Yeah. And you're like, Holy crap, people actually like this. Yeah, actually they did. But where did I hear? Who told me what the he heard I was making a year for that station? And Ooh. I I was even amazed at the amount. It was, something, it, was it was something like thirty million a year, and in those really? days, that was a lot of money. Yeah, in the nineties. Yeah. Wow. And I was that is only, a lot of and money. I was only actually all they had to pay me per year was like tops three hundred thousand, something like that. Wow. Yeah. And they had uh, well, and on top of all that, they had if you went out and did any kind of promotion. Yeah. There was a kick on top of that. Yeah, well, I, I got a kick because we made a deal. They liked me doing live commercials because everybody wanted me to do a live commercial for them. Right. We sold product. And um, what we did is we made a deal where they had to pay us $50 a live read. So if I had two there in the morning, go. that's an extra 100 bucks. If I had uh, two in the morning for a week, uh, that's uh, $500. Right, real real money. We like that. Real money, and over a year, I made something like fifty thousand dollars on the live reads. So that's what gave me the drag me up to somewhere around four hundred thousand a year. You know, uh -huh. so. But in spite of all that, at one point they decided to fire me. Sad. Hmm. Yeah, I I didn't really ever understand that. I never understood it either, but. You know, it, it didn't exactly go up from there, right? You know, the station in general. Well, I understood the second firing because what they wanted to do was to get me out of the way to make room for Howard, right? And what they did is they hired uh, Johnny Steele, who's a little rat bastard, uh, yeah, who um, uh, convinced them that he should put they should replace me with him, right? Right. And, but this was before I was let go, okay. He was in there always fighting to get the job, get the job. He would run into the boss and go, Alex was mean to me today. 
Interesting. Yeah, that kind of. Now, bullshit. did you know? Did you know that was coming way in advance? No, no. I mean, I I remember the day that that you, it happened. It was on a Friday, and you did a. Uh, uh, well, it's a great a, story. Bennett live. Yeah, Bennett there's a great at, story to that. Uh, I told them that when we finally decided how I was going to leave, and they said you can leave on your own, you know, your own terms right. and so on. Sure. And I said, well, one of my main terms is no one is to know. Right. And I will announce it on the Friday show that we're doing as a remote. So I go down to the show at what, four, five, five thirty in the morning. Right. And there are TV cameras and, and, and news people. And they say, we hear that this is your last show. Somebody from the station had leaked it. Right. And that pissed me off. I mean, yeah. I went into my boss, uh, who at that time was uh, Pat McNally, and I said, Pat. Little Pat. Nobody was supposed to know about this, and it's uh, all the press is out there. And they said, yeah, I know. And I went, well, how did it get out? He says, we don't know. Turned out it was one of the salespeople who alerted the press. Anyway, uh, I go on, I do the show, right? Right. And everybody's like looking at the morning newspaper because it's in the Chronicle that morning. And they're all oh. looking at the morning newspaper and then looking up at me like with these sad eyes. And I'm supposed to do a show in this atmosphere. Right. Okay. So I go on, I do the show like I always do the show. Okay. Yeah. Not a word about what's happening and everything like no, that. No, I, I remember listening to this because you and I talked the day before. Yeah. And and uh, I, I had a whole thing I was going to say and so on and so forth. And I, I was so mad about this whole thing that I didn't say a word about it. Didn't say a word yeah. about it. The end of the show. Do you know how I finished the show? Do you remember how I finished the show? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Something like you did, um, and I'll see you guys again on Monday. Or That's like right. That. <laughs> <laughs> and I walked off stage. I was like looking stage. around going, uh-oh. I walked off stage, and I looked at Pat, and I said, now you guys sort the fuck out of this. You know? Yeah. So I never technically yeah. ever said goodbye. Yeah. No, I know. That was a, it was a good moment. And then they brought in Johnny Steele, Rat Bastard Johnny Steele. Uh, yeah. They brought in Rat Bastard Johnny Steele. Go ahead, Johnny, <laughs> sue me. Um, Rat Bastard uh, Johnny Steele. And they had him do it yeah. for like about two or three months, something like that. But, all, yeah, but all, yeah. all he was was the Sherbert for me. Now, let me explain this. That when you're in a fancy restaurant and you go from course to course, they give you a a uh, scoop of sherbet to bite on to get the taste of the previous course out of your mouth so that you can get ready for the next course. Right. And he was the sherbet for for uh, Howard Stern. Howard. In other words, let's let's now we fired Alex. Now we have this guy in there. We'll fire him. Everybody will forget that Howard is replacing Alex. Right. It wasn't. I don't know. I it was. It was bad. Not you. The the Johnny Steele part was just whatever. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, oh, uh, uh, Johnny. As they say, Johnny was just going after my job months before I ever even really? discussed leaving. Yeah. Oh. oh yeah. He was always in there with Pat, kissing his ass. And then, as I say, he went in one occasion and said. Uh, well, in fact, I got it from Pat because he said to me, he said, why are you being so mean to Johnny? And I said, why shouldn't I be? <laughs> you know, I mean, yeah. you know, uh, and, and uh, he ran into him and he told me, he said he was complaining today that you weren't nice to him today. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, well, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. But did he come in prepared with something? Did you talk about something in advance? Probably not. You're just no. doing your thing. No, no. I mean, I wasn't treating... I didn't know that he was gunning for my job. Mm -mm. But he got it for that was about a, a week and a half, and that's it, you know? Yeah. So. 
Well, they had no plan. I don't know what those meetings must have been like. Yeah. You got Johnny, you got Lisa, you got Lori. Yeah. They must have had some kind of meeting about a plan for programming. Yeah, well, uh, I don't even think Pat knew that they were making way for Howard. Really? Right. Because the trouble was with Howard, he never could get into the Bay Area. He was uh, far, closest he came, he was on a station owned by Infinity in uh, in uh, San Jose. Right, right, and killing he, me. And he, uh, being there, he couldn't even come close to my ratings, even when they were bad, you know. Well, because it was a family show, and Howard's thing is, it's not a family show. It's never been a family show. It's creepy, and it repeats, and... Who, Howard? I, I'd be, yeah. It, every, about every 20 minutes, the jokes would just repeat. And he'd bring in people and make fun of them that were handicapped. And I remember talking to a Rick Stewart one time and going, because he had, uh, they were doing a promotion with Hank, the uh, angry drunk dwarf. And this guy would just get shit faced and um, sing ACDC. And, and uh, I said to Rick, I said, hey, man. That guy is going to be dead. You're, you're making fun of his alcoholism, and now you're paying him to sing drunk in front of people. This isn't funny. It's sad. Yeah, yeah. And he, and he was like, well, Rick said, Rick said to me, he goes, he goes, you're just jealous. You didn't think of it. And I go, think of making, uh, you know, handicapped people get drunk. Yeah, and yeah. Sing. We 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 did a lot of things that were in bad taste. There was no question about uh, that. Well, there's bad taste, and then there's. But hurting someone. The, the, I mean, it's okay then to there, hurt me. there's, Well, then there's taking advantage of somebody because of right. a disability or something. Who doesn't like know? That. You know. You know. Um, it, it probably. I. I wouldn't go out of my. Uh, I don't think I'm going out of my way by saying. And I never listened to Howard's show. People were always amazed. They said, "You've never heard yeah. the Howard Stern show?" And I said, "How can I? I'm doing my show." Right. I've never heard it. Everybody was coming no. back to me saying, you know, he's stealing this from you and he's stealing that from you. And, and then he would take it too far and you just go, this is embarrassing. Well, the, what I loved was when Howard finally, brat bastard that Howard can be, in those days, uh, went out and uh, uh, made uh, 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 started putting me down on the air, saying I stole my act from him. Right, and I'm thinking to myself, Howard, how, how long have you been in this business? How long have I been in this business? How could I possibly, in anybody's mind, stolen anything from you? And I never listened to him. Um, right. Basically, he uh, he listened to me when he was growing up in New York. Right. And I and he did admit he did admit to somebody I know that in fact. I was one of the people that were his inspiration for what he yeah. does, you know. And I don't mind, you know. I don't mind that, you know. Uh, I wish I were making his money, but hell, you know, I don't mind that. In fact, I, I take that as a compliment. But don't deny it, right? You know, don't there were, there and, were too and, many and don't weird, on top of that say I stole from you, right? There were too many weird similarities with what he was doing, and then he just took it in this direction that. Well, when I watched it or listened to it, I didn't listen to it a lot, but when I listened to it, it was like, it was painful because I could see you and then I could see this other thing that it wasn't a compliment to what you do. It was just wrong. I mean, I don't know. Well, what, what, what he did do, he took two parts of my career and combined them into one show. What he did is I did my radio show, which was one thing. Right. And then I was doing Midnight Blue, which is a sex show on, on public access. Right. He I simply took Midnight Blue and my radio show and combined them. Yeah. You know. You know. And so we had a lot of I sexual can, you know. weirdos on and things like that, you know. But, uh, no, you're right. You have to. You're right. We were yeah. in terribly bad taste, but we never would ever go after somebody because of a disability Right, uh, you know, or you would, you would, if if somebody wanted to do something and they contact me or they contact the stationery or whatever, you you'd get a mental 
overview of them before you continued. Right. And like, are they gonna? Are they really okay? Do they understand that? You know what we do is not kind of you know bent that direction. That this isn't about getting famous. It's about making people laugh on the way to work and learn something. Right. Right. Well, you know, I mean, we were just, all we were doing, we we're going in every morning just having fun. That's all right. we were doing. You know, easiest job in the world. Just go oh, in yeah. and have fun. Now, it, mind you folks, it, you could say, oh, well, that, that's not really good because that, you're, you're, you, you, what are you doing? You're doing nothing. You're just having fun. But no, there's a talent to having fun on the radio. Right. You know, you fun in private life. You got to be alive. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> you got to be alive. You got to be alive. And it's early. And I'm the ringleader. You know, right. I'm the ringmaster. I've got yeah. all these tigers up on the on the stands, you know, yeah. cracking my whip. It works whip. so well. Huh? It, it works so well. It works so well. Yeah. But they what no and what people didn't see is at ten o'clock, you and I or Lori, Lisa, whoever we were a sad bunch walking out the door. <laughs> we're like all like just well. I, uh, one day, like we worked fifteen hours. Somebody interviewed me once, and they said, uh, "You know, what's the, what's the, what's the uh, you know asking me about me and how I relate to the show and so on and so forth." And finally, I said something. And after I said it, I went, "Boy, is that sad." My what I said to her was. Uh, when the show is over and I'm leaving the studio, the best part of my life is over with. You know, the best part of my day is shot. You know, it, it's a very, very weird feeling to do what we were doing and then at 10 o'clock turn it off and try to do something the rest of the day. Because the best part of your day is over. He's already yeah, over. Yeah, yeah, it, it was done. You know, it was like. You know, you and I go eat or we go sit at your house or take a nap or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and uh, uh, so that was the sad part of it. But anyway, I think the reason they got rid of me was to get Howard in there. They tried to get rid of me once before when Mel Carmazan tried to hire me to go to work at WJFK outside of Washington, D.C., and they were offering me more money than I was making at Live 105 to move to Washington with a two-year contract to do the show. And my feeling was they're trying to get me out of here because they want to make way for Howard. You know, because Howard was not faring well as long as I was in the mix. And, um, you know, in a way I feel sorry I never took that job. Uh, because I, I, they were going to syndicate me and everything. And uh, the only thing was that the last minute before I was supposed to leave, I already had given notice at Live 105, before I was supposed to leave, they um, uh, said, well, Mel won't give you a contract until you physically left Live 105 because he doesn't want to be accused of stealing you. Which, you know, is, is probably a good thing to think about because Live 105 could have maybe sued him, you know. Instead, they bought right. the radio station eventually. But Yeah, you know, I was going to say, but, they, went, they went deep. Yeah. Uh, so I said, I didn't trust Mel Carmison. And I said to the other people, I don't think I can do that. I'm not going to, I'm not going to suddenly be vulnerable and exposed and have you suddenly say, well, we've changed our mind and you've got no contract on me. So I turned down the job. Years later, I went to Live 105, I went to uh, Sirius XM and who right. became the, the head of Sirius XM after I was there for a short time, but Mel Carmazan. And I realized what a big mistake I had made because he turned out to be a real friend of talent. He loved talent. He admired talent. He's the guy that's responsible for Howard Stern's career. Mm. Okay. Um, and I met him one day in the uh, 
break room, about the time that Sirius was almost going belly up, I think the stock was down to five cents. Sorry, I didn't buy at that time. Um, because even though the, it's, uh, excuse me, I got to sneeze here. Ew. I've been having a bloody be nose. Good. I've been having a bloody nose when I sneeze. <laughs> nice. Here, that'll take care of it. I'll Maybe do... you're sick. Didn't you have COVID? Huh? Did you have COVID again? Yeah, I'll get to that. We'll get to that. Okay, good. But anyway, this is us talking about my time at Live 105. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. anyway, so I one day, the day after uh, he saved the company, and uh, got somebody to back it up and give 40%, buy 40% or something of the company and saved Sirius, okay, from going under. Right. And that following Monday, I saw him in the break room and I went up to him and I said, uh, uh, Mel, I'd like to introduce myself. I said, I'm Alex Bennett. And he looked at me and he said, Alex Bennett, I know, I, I, don't, you don't have to introduce yourself. I know who you are. I'm a fan. And I went, wow. That's you know, a thing. This is the guy I didn't want to go to work for? He's yeah, a, but you were taking a chance, a real big chance. Yeah, but he, he, was a, he said, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a fan. And we talked for a short time, and I found him to be positively engaging and nothing like people had reported. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there's a classic. Never heard a good thing. Well, there's a classic story about Mel, and whether it's myth or not, I don't know. But supposedly, somebody was wa a general manager of one of his stations was walking down Fifth Avenue, and on the other side of Fifth Avenue, he sees Mel, and Mel sees him, and Mel starts yelling at him, and starts yelling at him, and then walks across the middle of Fifth Avenue, yelling at this guy. And this guy finally says, Mel, watch out, you could be hit by a car. And he yelled back, nobody hits Mel Carmison until I say they can hit Mel Carmison. <laughs> now, I don't know if that's a myth or not, but it's a great story. You know, yeah, that's yeah, the kind of good. stories that were made up about him because he was not, I wouldn't want to be a general manager working for him. He was a taskmaster. No. He just came yeah. in and, you know, cracked the whip. But... I'm sorry I never went to work for him at that point. You know, I think his intentions were noble. He, of course, wanted to get me out of San Francisco, but he was offering me a very good job at very good money with very good terms for syndication, you know. So uh, uh, I'm sorry. I, that maybe is the biggest mistake I made in my life was not taking that job. Yeah, I always thought that they should have done it. They should have syndicated the Live 105 stuff. Well, Live 105 said, if you stay with us, we'll syndicate you. And they never did. Right. Yeah. But Mel, uh, Mel was, is, was, is a really decent person. That's what mm -hmm. I found out. And that if I had, say, left Live 105 and waited to see that contract, it would be at my, on my, uh, at my doorstep happened. the next day, because that he would not, he was not a dishonest man. He was a man of his word, and I really well, came to really like and care about Mel Carmison. And then, of course, hmm. Sirius dumped him at some point. Uh, right. and, and he saved the company. He saved. He brought. He, now. Yeah. You don't ever hear that name anymore. Yeah, and under his tutelage, uh, Howard came in. You know. It, 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 he was a, he's a great broadcaster. I haven't heard from him since. He hasn't done anything. I suppose he made so much money off of selling Infinity to CBS and so on that uh, right. he didn't need to, you know. So. Sitting on a boat somewhere. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, we had good times. We had good times, you know. It was, uh, it was the show I always wanted to do, okay? Mm -hmm. So I have no, I was thinking about it a couple of weeks ago, I said I have no remorse over not doing it anymore. I'm glad I had the chance to in the first place. Because what I did was literally recreate the kind of radio I listened to when I was growing up, where you had a live studio audience. Right. You know. Yep. Yeah. And it was good. Yeah, it was really good. It's really good. It was good, and but it's kind of weird, you know. You can listen to old radio tapes of, of, well, you can listen to Howard or whatever, 
they don't hold up. You throw that, that I'll use the term garbage, on that we put together, and it still sounds funny. Oh, yeah. It's, it still works. I've listened to tapes, and I've laughed at them. Yeah, I, I, I had one on in the car by accident. I had a digital thing in the car, and I was driving to San Francisco, I think, and I started laughing, and then I looked at the at the dial on the on the radio. I thought I was listening to Cirrus, and it was an old tape of you and me rambling on in the early morning, and mm. and I was laughing, and I'm yeah. like, oh crap, it's just two of us. I've done it too, and it's made me laugh. Hey, listen, we've run out of time here. All right. Yeah. Good for us. Yeah. Let's do it again next time, okay? Sure enough. Right. Ladies and gentlemen, Bye, sir. that's Charles Farnham. Charles Farnham, now according to legal year. documents everywhere. Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey, thank you very much, Chuck. Appreciate it. Uh, well, oh, I got to turn on my, that's what I've got to do. I was looking, I was saying, well, why, don't, why does it look wrong? And here's, here's the lights and everything, and we're going strong. Oh, boy. Hmm. My stomach's bothering me tonight. Oh, well. Anyway, how are you, everybody? Good to see you. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's, Tuesday, it's Wednesday, and I do another three days here, and then I got a weekend off again. I keep looking forward to the weekend off again. Uh, but anyway, uh, you know, what we do is we take uh, calls here on Zoom if you want to find out how to get us on zoom go to gabnet.net and over on the right part of the page right hand side of the page there's a place to click and it will actually just uh, put you here and and i will then accept you or refuse you i guess meanwhile there's just a couple of people waiting tonight so maybe i can if i can get rid of them early then i can just go back to sleep or something anyway um let me see here. Uh, admit all. Okay. Well, then we'll try admitting all and see what we get here. Here we get our Zoom people. There's Charlie Wallace. There is, uh, oh boy, my stomach is starting to ache. Mm. I might have to have you okay, guys. Go. go take care of your stuff. Uh, Charlie and I got this. Yeah, I know you got it. Well, when I'm here and blast, blast the 49ers for an hour from, from the Super Bowl. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So anyway, so I'm, uh, I, no, I, I, the problem is what I did, yes, you see, I found a new laxative. Now let me tell you what the new laxative is. It's been, a, every time I used to eat chicken and then eat the chicken skin as well, mm. I used to get the trots the next day. Mm. So uh, along with the company stomach ache, which wasn't much fun, but at least uh, if I was, let's say, blocked up, it unblocked me. It was the best thing I could do. Better than taking any laxative, chicken skin. Or at Thanksgiving time, turkey skin as well. That's always a nice one as well. Um, but uh, I, don't know, I don't think anybody wants to hear that, okay? Do, do, do you guys want a recitation of my organ recital? Um, anyway. Hello, Jeff. How you doing? He's down in Florida now. We found out the other day. He's, uh, he's, uh, how long are you down there for? Wait a Looks minute. Looks like you're still connecting. Uh, wait a minute. We got, we got to readmit, um, we got to readmit, uh, there we go. There we, there's Brian. It, what, oh, there we go. What happened to you? Yeah, it's just, you guys are freezing up too much. So I had to get off. Oh, okay. Try to get. Oh, okay. Are we not freezing up now? Oh yeah. Uh oh. You're a natural born actor. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> I got it it's again. I gotta log off again. Hold on. Oh boy! So anybody, so you, um, your 49ers lost, right? No, 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 no. That's uh, the other people that call. Oh, I see. And and oh, see. we're the NFC East. We're the terrors of the football league. Yeah, and what is that? What is what is your team? The Eagles, and we got the Cowboys. 
Yep. Now, I can understand how he's got the Cowboys, right? Because that's the Dallas Cowboys, right? Yep. So, yeah, I know my football. Uh, uh, that's the Dallas Cowboys. But why why, uh, why did you take Philadelphia? We go through this every time. Yeah. My mom went to high school at Hillsdale High School in San Mateo mm-hmm. in 1960, and then she showed me the yearbook, and Dick Vermeil was the coach at that time when she was in high school, and he happened to be the coach of the Eagles at that time. That's why she was showing me. She goes, oh, he used to be our high school coach, and she showed me the yearbook, which I still have, mm-hmm. and then I just started watching him then. So it just sort of stuck with me. Yeah. Well, uh, but, but I, you know, I grew up in Redder City, and we, you know, I was down the street from the Red Morton Community Center, and that's where they all practiced. And so I used to see them all over town all the time, the 49ers. But um, yeah, sort of stuck with the Eagles. You're stuck with the Eagles. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's good. That's good. Better not to be um, a, a fan of the Chiefs because they like to just shoot up their town. That's all. Yeah. Oh, my God. You see the video of the guys like ran down one guy and jumped them? There's a video of one that one of the shooters was running through the crowd, and a couple guys took off on him and tackled him and got him down until the police came. Wow, that very good for them. Good for yeah. them. Yeah. I don't know what that was. Do they know what that was about yet? See, no. I I couldn't I couldn't watch the news tonight. Ask me why I couldn't watch the news tonight. Why could you watch the news tonight? Well, what's the day today? Valentine's. Valentine's. Guess who was taking her, his lovely wife out to dinner? Ah, Jeff. Oh, nice. Not me. <laughs> what? I said not me. What kind of a boyfriend are you? <laughs> Don't you know? You've got to do it. And I'll tell you. I got to do the show tonight. You no, know. No, you no, know. No, it, forget it. Forget it. That, that, oh, uh, no, uh, let, me, let me just tell you this. I'd forgive you for not being here tonight, because you don't want to give her. Any ammunition in any future fight, but she'll go back and dig this out. You remember that Valentine's yeah. Day you didn't take me out to dinner? <laughs> I, I don't know if she sounds that way, but let's assume she does. No, she has a very sweet voice. What do you? What are you looking embarrassed about? You guys start freezing up again, and then it's funny when you guys catch up. You know, you know how it does that. It goes really fast. Pretty funny. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, boy. It's okay. I already have... Hold on. Okay. I have something from six years ago that keeps popping up. Yeah. Six years ago that keeps popping up? Six years ago, we had a oh, big oh, party. Oh, oh. We had a big we had a big Christmas party, and, you know, I'm like, let's go. We're going to the club. We have VIP table and all this stuff. And, yeah, she called it a bad time. I shouldn't answer. <laughs> so I get that, you know, all oh, remember this night when you did that? Yeah, so. Well, you see, I mean, yeah, that, that's fine. But Marjorie, you know, she remembers everything. She yeah, remembers, we know. They all do. Yes. They all do. Yeah. Right. And uh, so she remembers the time that I, <sighs> I didn't uh, uh, pick her up at the hospital. She, I was, I was living all the way downtown, you know, and she said, "Can you come pick me up?" And I'm going, "That's all the, the cab up there is. It just come down. I'll pay for the cab. Just get in a cab and come back, you know." And she didn't. Uh, she always, she took the cab, and has always reminded me that I never picked her up from the hospital. She keeps using that in any argument or whatever. But she, of course, forgets, right? that I had to go to the hospital for a kidney stone and she did not accompany me. But do I ever pull that out of my little grab bag? No, because guys don't do that. We, we can't remember anything anyway to begin yeah. with. All right. <laughs> but you know who remembers every year to help you in those fights? Facebook. What do you mean? Because yeah. when I get the thing, you haven't done anything for me last year or the year before. Uh, uh, excuse me. Do you see these pictures on Facebook from one year ago? Oh, I see. Okay, and then you show her that and you go, see, last year we did yeah. this or we did that. You know, I hate Valentine's Day. Do you? Yeah. 
Yeah, d- Jeff Stops. does too, and Jeff's had years of being married and everything, and he he's got a lovely time. wife. He's got a woman he's uh, crazy about. She's crazy about him, and uh, uh, yet I got to tell you, I I think that it is so phony baloney. The whole thing was invented by the the uh, uh, greetings card companies. Yep, to make money. To make money. So now we have to. Oh, it's Valentine's Day. You must. L- Give something to the person who loves you. And it's never the girl giving the guy something. She never she never went down the street and said, here are some roses for you, my dear. You know? No. I have to buy her the flowers that she then complains about. Well, these things died after two days. It's like our relationship. <laughs> See, I, I told Marjorie tonight, I said, I think really, because if somebody walked in and he was there with his, I guess his his girlfriend, and he uh, he um, um, she had a, a, some flowers, a bouquet of flowers, and I went, that's really nice. But you know, it'd be nicer if he bought her. If he had faith in the relationship, you would buy her a potted plant. And the reason is the potted plant will live in, in a cactus would even be better because that's a succulent yeah. and they will live through anything. If you don't yep. water them, they still somehow survive. All right. Uh, and, and buy a potted plant because that will be there next year and the year afterwards and continually remind them of your love for them. Yeah. But if you give them flowers and the flowers die after two days, that, what does that say about your relationship? You know? So potted plants, folks. No, no. Who, who's? Uh, implants. What, is, she, is, is she disagreeing with us? Usually. <laughs> <laughs> You don't believe in potted plants on Valentine's Day as a gift? I don't think you're buying a cactus. If we give me cactus, I'm going to die. Oh, you're a genius, Pam. Cactus is even better. Yes. Yeah. You don't even have to water it. Yeah. Here, no. Here's what I do. Give no. it to Marjorie Cactus and say, I bought it because it reminds me of you. Yeah, dry that. Or you could say it's from a prick. <laughs> yeah, it reminds me of you too, right? <laughs> Big prick. I like that. Whoever. So came you up would you would that. just prefer flowers that die in a week, right? Beautiful flowers, flowers. Yes. Mm-hmm. Would die. They don't have to be roses. Roses are bad for the environment because they run them up and back and forth so much. It was in the paper this week. Really? They do yeah. what? Is it because it's it's so bad on that? Yeah, you know, like the air because they run they run like. Three, I think it was like 300 planes a day this month with flowers from Colombia with roses. Oh, wow. wow! Yeah, I know. So, in like, each you of know, those planes to go more, se- several more flowers t- that are uh, grown here. Well, in each of those planes also are several kilos of coke. Probably. So yeah. you know, <laughs> that was for the guys that didn't get That's to uh, you know get their Valentine yeah. gift. <laughs> yeah. Bye, guys. But you know. Does Marjorie ever buy me flowers on on no. Valentine Day? No, no. Uh, tonight it was time to go out to dinner. Who picks up the tab? Of course, the guy who isn't working. You know. So anyway, yeah. <clears throat> that's that. Hello, Alan. How are you doing? I'm doing good. I was helping Amy try and get her equipment to work on Skype. Oh, oh, oh on on Skype. Was well, she got some new equipment or something? No, I guess uh, she's changed rooms or something, and her husband took everything apart, and moved it for her, and then put it back together. And she didn't take a picture of where the cables go. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> First thing you do. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Here, well, well actually, if I had my way, I would pull out every wire here. Every last one of them, and then just rewire the whole place. There you go. Oh my God, you're gonna be off the air for about. Six yeah. No, if I had, if I had, say. Uh, a... Oh, there we go. <laughs> All right, look at that. Oh, go ahead, brag. Is that from your garden? Looks yeah, like from it. my garden. Yeah, but, but the heat. Yeah, but... from my garden in the Jeff, snowstorm. Just picking for other neighbors. Yards. Did he take you out to? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Did he at least take you out to dinner tonight? <laughs> And we went out to dinner and flowers, Alex. Really? Wow. Oh, okay. What a guy, Jeff. You must look bad, Jeff. Um, <laughs> Stop smiling, Jeff. It's called I'm smart. No, you got to do that. You, and it's all the re- The only reason is, is because one day a Valentine's Day card company, a card company came up with the idea of Valentine's Day. Yep. That, they sell a ton it's of the cards. only reason. 
Did you get flowers for uh, whoever you're there with, uh, Brian? Are you, are you frozen, Brian? <laughs> are you just putting it? You're song? freezing up. I'm yeah. freezing up the mat. I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna restart my computer. Okay. No, I'm serious. Really? Why don't you rewire it while you're at it? Don't you guys see me freezing up a little bit? No. Yeah. 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 You're freezing up. No, you, that might not be a computer okay. though. It might be the bandwidth. Do you have good bandwidth? Yes, yeah, says your internet connection is unstable. But nobody's no. The kids aren't playing games or anything. So. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Hey, Alex, I got one more Valentine's story, then I'll leave you guys to yourself. Okay, wait a minute. Hold on a second. So Jeff, used to, Jeff used to tell me all the time, well, it's a Christian holiday. It's St. Valentine's Day, so I don't celebrate it. I was like, oh, no, no, no. You don't get the shiks a wipe and then pull the St. Oh, Valentine's Day. Oh, of course. Of course. No, uh, no. Of course. you can't go both ways there, buddy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. It comes with the package. He does yeah. allow you to have a. He does allow you to have a Christmas tree. After all, you know. Yeah. Really allow me? Ouch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I got I got it all wrong. He, he doesn't allow you anything. He yeah, to Jeff okay. under the bus. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. What are you turning red for, Jeff? Are you a little uh, embarrassed? I'm just, just alive and try to stay alive. Just yeah. trying to. Stay alive. Oh yeah, you know, you get two women together like Pam and my my wife, for instance, and and uh, have them come over, and they go over in the corner, and then they start talking about us, looking back at us every now and then, you know. <laughs> and of course, I'm sure one of the stories Marjorie tells him, remember, he didn't pick me up at the hospital. <laughs> yes, that's right. I didn't pick you up at the hospital. Why? Uh, because I thought you might be dead. Okay, mm -hmm. you know, what am I? Anyway, so I mean, but uh, you know, I mean, I had I had to pay for dinner, which I don't mind doing, but you know, it's expected. That's the thing. It's expected. I never heard her say, "Ah, it's Valentine's Day. Let me take you out to dinner." Yeah, who wanted to go out for dinner? You uh, uh, By the way, uh, who picked up the tab tonight, Jeff, at dinner? I wanted to pick her up for dinner. And I didn't want to go. And she didn't want to go. She didn't want to go to dinner? No, because she says I'm just too many people are crazy. It's a bad night to go out because they double the prices on everything. Of course, and there's you, you got to try to get online and they tell you. Nah, it could have gone through the drive-through with her. Wendy's well, well, has got a drive-through. <laughs> we went to our favorite <laughs> restaurant in the neighborhood. <laughs> we, we went to the, our favorite restaurant in our neighborhood, and believe it or not, they didn't raise the prices. Wow. You know. I mean, it still came to a lot of money, a lot more than it's ever come to before. But that's because Krispy Kreme, no, no, it was McDonald's, uh, <laughs> and we we love McDonald's. It's great, and it's great that you posted a picture of you and Marjorie uh, on your Facebook today. Well, I've got a picture. I got to put up on my Facebook page. <laughs> no, you you put up Putin and Trump. Oh yeah, that one. <laughs> Somebody sent me that. <laughs> I can't remember who. But yeah, uh, I can't remember. Where they're laying in bed next to each other and it says Happy Valentine's is going around. Yeah, yeah, but I love it. It's good. But no, what I saw, what the, it, it was in our uh, our courtyard today, today when we left, is some kids got together because it snowed a lot here yesterday in New York. Not a not. It's, it wasn't a major snowfall, but it was it was significant enough that there was some snow left on the ground. So some kids in our complex got together, and they got together a lot of snow and made a snowman. The only trouble is by now the snow had turned dirty. No, you know, but they still made a snowman nonetheless, and I have a picture of it, and I'm I'm, I'm going to title it a New York snowman. <laughs> You know, I think they use marshmallows for the eyes. You know, I mean, it's one of those deals. But uh, amazing to me. I'm sniffling. Dirty snow is better than yellow snow. <laughs> Your daughter's handwriting. But <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Well, anyway. That's the daytime joke. That's the daytime joke. That's the yeah. Monday joke. So <laughs> where do you take your other half to for a dinner tonight, Brian? None of your business. Okay. He, he said he didn't take her to dinner. Oh, well, I missed that part. Did you, Brian? 
He never, he, ne- he never listens to the show. He just comes on and wings it. Yeah, no, well, he, I was helping Amy, so I missed. Well, him. no, we were talking about he didn't, and that I told him that he's in for a lot of trouble because this oh, okay. that women Sorry, get Brian. get something on you, and then it becomes collateral for them. Oh and, yeah, not him. Any so anytime you have an argument, you know, I have an argument with Marjorie. Blah 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 blah. blah, blah. You didn't pick me up at the hospital. Right. Who was the one that came up with the picture of my van on the tow truck after we had? Uh, <laughs> that was that was cute. What's this? The, uh, and the day after Christmas, Steve Fox and Brian and Phil and I got together and had. You never my, invite me. <laughs> well, it's because he knows you'll be bitching about the price. So anyhow, um, I don't know. So so um. He took a picture of my van, which was out in the parking lot. I got a white Econoline van. And the night before that, apparently, uh, a van that looked just like mine was used to crash into the front of a building, a window, and burglars went in and burglarized the place. And so the van on a on a flatbed tow truck was there, and, and Brian uh, sent it out to all of us. Was yeah, it, and it was it was Alan. So it was it was it was it was good. It was good. Oh, boy, I got the sniffles again tonight. I mean, last time I had is this, it still more snow coming? I, no, I don't think so. But it was cold out there tonight. It was. Uh, uh, let me see here. I would say it was, if I'm not mistaken, um, it was down to twenty nine. By the time we left the restaurant, what? Oh, the temperature wow. right now is twenty nine degrees. Wow, and we actually light. we actually took a a private car for two blocks. That's all, but we didn't want to walk it. It was that cold, and it was windy too. So, wow, you know. And uh, I would have a tendency to slip on ice too. So, but anyway, uh, but uh, last time I had the sniffles. It was when I got COVID, so I hope I'm not getting COVID again. Nah. Uh, huh? I'm I, hoping you didn't get it again, well, How can I get it again unless you get that th- slap back that you get occasionally with, uh, with uh, what do you call it? Rebound or whatever. You but, yeah. You had COVID, Charlie? No. Oh. No. He... As I wish, the Alex doesn't catch it again. Oh, okay, good. You haven't had it either, Brian, right? I had it once. Once, okay. Yeah, once with yeah. Jeff, you never got it, right? No COVID. Okay, and and you've had it once, right, Alan? Yeah. Well, I've had it three times. I'm a th- I'm a thruple winner. A hat trick. Huh? Yeah. You had the hat trick. Is that That's called? Because you hat? used to be famous, and the virus likes famous people. You used to be, people <laughs> who used to be famous. That's what I said. Used to, be a, it? used to be a big shot is really the term. Oh, yeah. that's, what it, that's what it is. Sorry. So my mother used to say about anybody. You're, you're a big shot now. Well, you know, people people used to say to me, like, uh, to get even with me or something when we'd be talking, oh, you're a has-been. And I said, well, it's better than being a never was. Yeah. You know? Cool. Uh, I'm America's most famous has-been. So, you know, what have you. And I'm still going strong here, right? That's right. Yep. Yeah. Seem like it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's turn into Alex Bennett and see how he's doing. Hi, everybody. He's all right. How are you doing? I'm, I'm sure I'll be that bad. I'll be like that when I'm 84. <laughs> I'm sure. Really? No. Well, I hope not. But, you know, I hope you're in great health at 84. I'm, I'm going to see my my um, um, what do they call him? My GP, my the guy who just my doctor, doctor, you know. He's, no, he's he, he, well, he yeah, he is a heart doctor, by the way. He, mm. Every now and then, every I'm sure he'll give it to me this time. Does a uh, thing on my chest and yeah. looks at my aorta and stethoscope, huh? Stethoscope. No, not a stethoscope. It's a kind of heart thing. It's a uh, EKG or something. Well, yeah. not an EKG. It's something else. It's where he checks GPS. to see, huh? Echo. 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 Echocardiogram. See, yeah. she's the doctor yeah. in the house. Go. Very good, Pam. Echocardiogram. 
What? What? Is, what? Hang on my chest. You know, we were going through the list. <laughs> yes. Uh, let's see. Cardiogram C. She's the doctor in the house. What? Why did? Why did Echo decide to react to that? Anyway, but uh, 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 echocardiogram, and he does it, and I have a slight uh, uh, stenosis, uh, uh, stenosis in my heart, but it's not bad or anything. It's not dangerous. Nothing that will kill me. Nothing. He said it's progressed so slowly that you'll probably have to wait 50 years before it gets bad. I said, well, by then, uh, I will be too old to understand. Anyway. So, uh, you know, so it was an echocardiogram. And so he'll probably do an echo, echocardiogram. But I just hate it because they're always looking for something, you know? That's the job. <laughs> and then because he doesn't know any other fields except heart field, he then sends me to some specialist who looks at me and says, are you nuts for being here? <laughs> you know? Yeah, put the urine sample on the counter. We'll see you in a year. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, I have to tell him not to. I'm not let him look at not to look at my urine and not to look at my PSA because I did that all with my urologist already for this year. Mm. You know, and I'd rather he come up with the answers to why I have a little blood in my urine. Which Actually, you always have to answer. It turned, right? Huh? Well, you, don't you always have to remind him about that? Yeah, that it that shows. Have a what it does is, for some reason, you've know, got these little dipsticks they put in there, and they check to see if there's any blood in your urine. And mine always yep. says there's some blood in his urine. So my urologist, of course, doesn't let it stop there. He then looks at it under a microscope, and right. doesn't see any blood, and that's fine. There's no blood. Those dipsticks are not a hundred percent. Well, they're never a hundred percent with me. If somehow it always says I have a little blood in my urine. Actually, it says it always says Ed, I had a little uh, blood in my uh, stool in my blood. So uh, <laughs> it was, uh, you know. That would not be good. That would not be good. When you get stool in your blood, that's not good, folks. No. I don't want to be a doctor here, but you know. Um, you're just... But anyway, so. What else? What's happening in the news today? I mean, besides, you know, once they get a story like this thing that happened in, uh, where was it? Uh, Kansas City. Uh, that's all there is on the news. You know. I heard that somebody at the Super Bowl got shot. No, at the parade. That's what Alex was talking about. excited it was the afterwards. At the that's parade. What Alex they were very, about. very, very, very excited in Kansas City. Oh, yeah. shit. Every city that wins a championship, somebody's always getting shot, stabbed, or something. Yeah. I, I, the winning like, team, all the fans, you ought to hand them a gun, it seems like, you know? Yeah, but... Why hand them one? They probably already have one. Yeah, probably. But these guys opened up shooting, right? It wasn't like a, yeah, yeah, we won, right? Yeah, but it no, was, no, it, no. It was it some was kind of... It was it, different it, than other celebrations. It was some... It looks stuff. like it was some kind of... Uh, fight between a couple of people or something and the guy put a lot of guns started shooting killed the they, guy that he was arguing with and then shot a couple of kids yeah it says they have two people in custody so. but the funny the funniest thing is there's a bunch of videos that go around like when there's like a rams the la rams are playing and there's two rams fans that are fighting each other and then there's another football team and the fans aren't fighting the other team's fans. They're fighting each other. It's hilarious. Well, I don't understand why whenever the, a team wins, the, they then have a big uh, uh, celebration in whatever town wins, and they tear down the city. Yeah. You know, they go crazy. Why? You won. You should be happy. You should want to preserve your city in every possible way. Right. But, you know, I mean, this all goes back to the old thing about enough with the guns already. Yeah. You know, haven't we learned our lesson yet? Obviously not. You know, uh, we're not protecting anything by keeping that Second Amendment uh, with the interpretation we have of it, which I don't think has ever been properly applied. You know, it's not the right to bear arms. It's the right to bear arms with limitations in order to maintain a well-ordered militia. The right to bear arms shall not be infringed. But that's we don't have well-ordered militias. You, know, you probably anymore. know more about the Constitution than Donald Trump. 
Oh, yeah. I bet he couldn't have said oh. what you just said. L listen, a worm knows more about the Constitution than Donald yeah. Trump. He'd like did, to did abolish watch, it. What? Did you watch uh, John Stewart's return Monday? Yes, I did. It was pretty good. It was okay. It was okay. Yeah. He, I, I just don't like that he forced a lot of the things that he, you know, that made him funny over the years. He was trying to force the expressions and stuff like that just to do it. But yeah, you should update the act. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, you know something? I mentioned to Marjorie, I mentioned this to Marjorie. Uh, what's his name? Um, John Oliver is better. Mm. At this point, mm. he's better. Uh, uh, it was a nice job on the part of John Stewart, and it was good to see him doing it. But I felt sure. like he was going through the numbers. Here's the face number twenty-five. You want me to do? And you exactly. Know, yeah. yeah. It it it, uh, yeah. it was a little too according to that kind of thing. And then he did an interview, which yeah, I, I would didn't. Rather have seen. He did an interview I didn't care about. I'm not. You know, huh? Yeah. And then. Uh, yeah, I agree that maybe from The Economist, and it's too long. Well, I think if he's going to do about, it looked like 40 minutes a week, I think he should probably do the whole thing as comedy. He shouldn't stop for an interview or anything like that, unless it's a very important interview, okay? That that's yeah. just getting lazy for the last 10 minutes of the show. That you've got yeah. a week to be able to write one show, so why not just do that, you know? I mean... John Oliver, you know, does a half hour every week and just straight through it's him doing his thing, you know, no interviews, nothing like that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, but uh, also I think, you know, John Stewart's been away from it for a long time now. Ten years. I didn't realize it had been ten years. Yeah, and he kind of, I think, doesn't want to let people down and he wants to give them what they think they should be getting. So that's what we saw. You know, and uh, uh, he's, he was okay. Nothing wrong with what he was doing. Just wasn't great, and, you know. And uh, and the one reporter was talking about, she was talking about, you know, Trump and Biden, but she was sort of reflecting on him, right? You know, saying that like was how, very funny. Oh, these two, She's very yeah, funny. Yeah, these two old guys are coming back from their old hack routine and, you know, yeah, that was really good. Well, they were talking about Trump and, and, and Biden, and she says some people Biden, just right. come back, do the same old thing that they used yeah. to do. We need well, a young, fresher <laughs> person. <Yeah. laughs> and, uh, and and finally, at one point, and it's a black woman on that show. She's very funny, very funny. Yeah. And he says to her, well, you're referring, of course, to Biden and Trump. She says, no. <laughs> uh, yeah, she said, yeah, whatever you think or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> whatever like, you yeah. think. You know, but it's really, uh, you know, she, uh, th those people weren't bad. Uh, but they, they're the people, they're the new guys on the block on that show. They've been around yeah. just a couple of years there and well, th they've honed their skills. Yeah, it's crazy the people who he's had on his show, right? I mean, so many people came successful, you know, movies or comedies or something. Well, I think what happened was, I like to say that he was responsible for their careers, but he really wasn't. They all had a desire. I mean, for instance, Stephen Colbert had appeared on Broadway, mm -hmm. you know, but long before he oh. went on The Daily Show. But, wow. but it was The Daily Show that gave him a platform where people could see him. Mm -hmm. And so, therefore, he got popular. I st mm -hmm. think Steve, wasn't Steve Carell for a short mm -hmm. time on The Daily Show? Yeah, I and, think Riggle, right? Riggle. And, yeah. yeah, and Samantha B. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah. Uh, all of them. Uh, and uh, I think, uh, you know, I think it was pretty uh, pretty good, you know. Yeah. What the people, but they were people who came through because they were in New York, they were good, and they were available. Mm -hmm. you know? And, and uh, John Oliver, of course, let's not forget John Oliver who did replace Jon Stewart, remember, during the summer when Jon Stewart was off making a movie? And then after he did that, he decided he wanted to leave and go see what his fortunes were elsewhere because he liked hosting a show like that and had ideas of how he wanted to do it. Mm -hmm. And it was it's, he, he's done very well. You know. I mean, every yeah. year he wins. You know, it, it, he, he should really get out of the way and not a run for anything during the Emmys. Uh, they shouldn't submit his tape to the Emmys for consideration. 
because yeah. he automatically wins. Oh yeah. Like in, yeah. In any, and they changed his category this year and he won that category. And now he's only doing one night a week and he's still, you know. Yeah, uh, you know, but all I'm saying is that Jon Stewart has one week to prepare that one show just like John Oliver, and I think it should be as well honed as John Oliver's, but it's not. So, you know. I mean, and, all those guys have writers, right? I mean. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Was hey, was David Feldman one of the writers on that show a long time, time ago? He went to The Daily Show for about a month. Oh, okay. And then he came to me and he said, I quit. I said, mm. why? He said, I didn't like doing it. And mm. I didn't believe that. <laughs> you know, I didn't mm. believe that. Yeah. What they did, they made him a producer. Mm. Okay. And he wanted to do more writing. Mm. That's what he told me. And that he didn't want to sit around and just be a producer. Yeah. You know? um, so he, he was with the show for maybe a month, maybe two months, mm. you know, at the, at the most. Uh, and uh, then he went back to California. You know, hmm. and then one day I saw him at a party here in New York, and I said, "Gee, you're back. How when did you get back?" He said, "Oh, about six months ago." I said, "And you never called me." For those who don't know, he and Bubbles had a couple of routines together. is pretty hilarious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they had the one where they talked the girl's name, and they'd say a comment after, like. Vanessa, I want to undress you. And he would have yeah. all these guys. <laughs> yeah, the show was so funny back then. It was hysterical. Yeah, but we, we were talking tonight about it tonight with Farnham. And mm. I said, you know, it's funny, but that show was the show I always wanted to do in radio. Mm. I created the show I always wanted to do. And... I, when I go back and listen to some of them, I actually laugh at them and I did them, mm -hmm. you know, but it, enough years have passed that I can stand back and listen to them as a, as an observer. And that was some pretty damn good radio. I have to, I, even if I say so myself, okay. And I'll say so myself. So. Yeah. Anyway, uh, let me see here. What else, what else is happening uh, in the, in the news? I don't they watch. Uh, what? Um, what? The House voted to impeach the um, what's his name? Uh, well, yeah. Well, they did. They, they could. They, they had to take a couple of weeks off from the last time they did it, so they can could probably get some goods on the three people that didn't vote their way. You know, I mean, it's going to go to the. It's going to go to the Senate. Nothing's going to happen. <laughs> You know, nope. so why are they wasting their time? Get some stuff done. Pass laws. How about getting some aid to Ukraine and to a lesser amount to Israel? They lost a seat. Huh? The, oh, they, they lost, lost a seat because uh, yeah, what's got his, George Santos. He got flip Democrats S now in that place. Is Swazi or Swozy or Swoozy or yeah, yeah. Like yeah. That. Uh, yeah so we're, so now they're only down to a two seat majority. Probably if they had this election were over with and he was in there. That's right. That's why they rushed it. So they could get they could You're get right. The You're right. Yeah, so they can get the impeachment before he came in. Oh boy. Yeah. Well, <laughs> they still might have gotten it by two votes, although. Yeah. You know. I mean it's just uh, but I, I was glad that that happened. And it also portends nicely for the fall election. I mean, in, in a very minor way, uh, they uh, they did something there, you know, by by electing some a Democrat instead of a Republican who was a pro-Trump Republican. Mm. But man, I'll tell you, I watch these ads on the new on the news. You know, they run the ads on the newscasts and so on and so forth. And geez, Almighty, do they ever! Um, uh, I, I watch them and the, the ads are so dirty. There's and not in a filthy way. I mean, they're dirty in campaign terms. Uh, it's just gotten to the point where it's all negative advertising, yeah. you know? And the one thing I liked about Swazi for the most part, 
except for some of the counter ads to her, but they were just about her and not about him. Uh, Swazi pretty much just did ads saying, here's what I'm going to do, and here's what I think we should do, and here's what I hope to do, and I kind of like that. That's the way they all should be. Don't go after, don't make fun of your opponent. Don't yell and scream about your opponent. Tell me what you're going to do. Sell me on you. And they don't. I mean, and they've uh, oh, these whole new this whole new brand of politics was invented by Donald Trump. You know, it's just yep. down and dirty and horrible. The latest being, oh God, I can't believe. See, I can't believe, uh, and I'm I'm talking straight to all you uh, Republicans out there who are Trump Republicans, and I know none of you are watching this program, so why am I talking to you? Uh, but geez, Almighty, I mean, listen to your guy, listen to him. You know, listen to what he want. The other day, Nikki Haley put down Nikki Haley's husband, husband for yeah. not being around during her campaign. Yeah. No, it just so happens he's serving in the military. Yeah, yeah he, he's a National Guard. He's like a sergeant in the National Guard or something, right? And yeah, so he's serving somewhere in a foreign <clears throat> country or something. A lot of Republicans didn't like that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So he, but they will. At some oh. certain point, I can't imagine that he won't shoot himself in the foot and lose even the MAGA Republicans because of something he said. And this might be it. This could clearly be it because you don't go after anybody that's in the military, you know, unless it happens to be me. Uh, then you can go after me for having been in the military. Trump wasn't in the military, was he? Oh, no. No, 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 no. no. He had shin splints or something. Yeah, yeah. Spurs. Was it Spurs? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the jingle, jangle, jingle. Um, but anyway. I, I just don't. I. He said so many, so much bad, incorrect, awful, making fun of people and, and all that type of stuff. And it just, I don't think there's anything that will stop this. Well, this guy. whole NATO thing, it's, it's one thing to say you don't like NATO. It's one thing to say NATO should pay their bills, okay? If, if that's your belief that they haven't been paying their bills. Cool. I understand that. Right. But to say, what would you do? Well, I would tell Putin if they don't pay their bills to go attack them. What? You're asking a foreign country to attack NATO? What? He thinks NATO is a country. That's why. <laughs> I mean, what? Did you notice that Putin had no comment? Did he have no comment? Had no comment. He thinks Trump's a baboon. Yeah, he but said so they interviewed him. Not not Tucker Carlson. Somebody else interviewed him, and and he said Trump's a baboon. You know, I mean, he's just you know, I, I can't believe the American public would actually vote for this guy again. Did he really say that? Yeah. Well, it was in Russian, but it was translated. So, <clears throat> yep, last week or two weeks ago. What did Trump say? Before, the, the, translation, the translation was wrong? Is that what Trump said? That could be it. Who knows? Yeah, yeah. Wow. Son of a bitch. But, I mean, just the, just those two things, uh, all you that, people... That's are, almost like inciting a war. Well, you people are a pro-Republican. I'm asking you this question, uh, who are pro-Trump. Can you vote for that? You know? I mean, come on. I, you know, I'm not, I'm not a big fan of Nikki Haley's. Charlie, you a big fan of Nikki Haley's? No, not at all. Not at all. Uh, and, uh, but, but nevertheless, could you live with her winning? No, I had enough of Republicans winning the White House. Well, no, 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 no but I mean, if... If let's say uh, she won instead of Trump, she won instead of, of Trump uh, and ran and won over over oh. Biden. Could you live with her? I don't mean well, we, we, I don't we mean would have an election in twenty twenty eight. So probably I could live with it. Yeah, but I mean, it, 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 she couldn't possibly be 
worse than Donald Trump, could she? Oh, no, no. no. Nobody's at work. Liz Cheney's not worse than Donald Trump. Well, you know, we... Dick Cheney's not worse than Donald yeah, Trump. Dick Cheney's not worse than Donald Trump. Well, you know, uh, let's face it. Dick I mean, I mean off, uh, as, I, as I've said, you know, uh, compared to uh, uh, either of the Bushes, uh, uh, you yeah. know, they're better than Donald Trump. In fact, yeah. uh, um, 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 Nixon was better than Donald Trump. Come to think of it, Hitler was better than Donald Trump. <laughs> you go, yeah. You're right. Did you see? Did you see uh, Chris, Christy on the over the weekend Saturday morning? One of those yeah, shows. Yeah, Sunday morning. Yeah. He was really. He's. He's. I like him a lot. Well, you know, I'll tell you. I. I, I don't know what morning I woke up and said I like this guy. Yeah. You know, and I only like him, he, to begin with, what he does, he, he says, you know, they say, are you, are you thinking of leaving the Republican Party over all this? And he said, no, I'm a Republican, tried and true, and I will never stop being a Republican. And I understand that about him. But I think there's something about him that's honest. And he doesn't think Trump's a Republican. He, he, he doesn't think Trump's a Republican, and Trump isn't. Right. Trump invented his own party. That's no, why he calls it MAGA. He doesn't call it yeah. Republicans. You know? So, yeah. <clears throat> so anyway, uh, let me see here. Any other big items that hit me over the weekend? Nothing. Eh. I just wish somebody would do something just obnoxious so I can sit here and rail against it, you know? But... Uh, well, well, it yeah. was this Unfortunate that Trump wasn't celebrating with all the fans in in Kansas City. You always wish him ill, don't you, physically? Oh, absolutely. Really? Yeah. I can't bring myself that far. You know. You know, I I I but, you know, I mean, he I, has secret service protection, so I'm would. sure he has secret service protection. He does. But there's only, you know, there's only so much, it's amazing, there's only so much protection they can do for anything. I mean, they're talking about what can we do now that the, there was this shooting in, the, at, in, in Kansas City? And the answer to that is, what are you going to do? You know, I'd say perhaps make it more difficult for people to lay their hands on guns. There you go. That would be for starters. I don't think it's going to stop shootings from happening, but it's going to make them a hell of a lot harder to happen. You know, that woman yeah. that shot up Joel Osteen's church uh, oh, yeah. had a history of schizophrenia, but she was able to buy a gun, uh, an AR-15, legally. Well, two yeah. things I was most bothered about with that was that the woman shot up uh, Joel Osteen's church, and then the other thing that was uh, a, kind of good news was it was a Joel Osteen's church. <laughs> I know. I saw the. I, I was flipping through something and I saw the headlines. It's like shooting Joe. I just saw shooting and Joel Joe Osteen. Osteen. And I like opened it up and oh my god, I got to read this. Didn't, but it wasn't what I thought. Didn't uh, somebody crash a car into a hospital in Austin today? Yes, they did. Yes, they did. Now, did I, they don't do, know, I don't did, know why that's news. I mean, now did they do that? Did they do that on purpose? I, have I haven't heard. heard. Whether that was on purpose or not, if they just were drunk or fell asleep at the wheel or whatever. So today we got through watching um, Dr. Death the second year. <laughs> Anybody watch Dr. Death? No. That's pretty good stuff. Uh, it's on Peacock. And the, the, the second year was about this doctor. If you may remember, there was this doctor who came out and said he had created an artificial trachea. Mm. And, and oh. yeah, that was impreg. It was made out of some kind of plastic, but then it was impregnated with stem cells, hmm. and then they would insert it in people, <clears throat> and it would replace the trachea. The only thing is, nobody lived more than about two months after he inserted these things, Ooh. because there was no science behind it. He hadn't done any testing on animals. He was just putting these things in people, hmm. and it again brought up the thing that this hospital, which is the biggest hospital in Sweden, was fighting the notion that this guy was doing bad because they were the most, they're probably the most important hospital practically in the world, Coleander or something, I can't remember the name of the, of the hospital. Mm. 
uh, and and how they kind of kind of hid it for a while or wanted to believe that this science was true, but the fact is the people who run the uh, the hospital aren't doctors. They're people who run a business. Yep. And then when they had to judge whether this guy should be brought up on charges or whatever because he wasn't doing decent science and people were dying as a result, they didn't do anything about it because he was making them money. Wow. That gives you a lot of faith in the medical system, doesn't it? Yeah. And then the show they did before it, the first year they did, was about this guy who just was operating on people all the time, and every time he was in there, he was chopping out parts of their bodies, and he, he just he couldn't do anything when he was in them. He may have been dyslexic and then operating on people, but oh my God. he was kept going, and people kept standing up for him because he was good for the hospital. <laughs> Well, I learned a lesson from that uh, that thing. So anyway, then we watched the documentary on this whole thing, as it really happened, and uh, it's it's absolutely horrifying that this guy was able to get away with all of this. And the way he got away with it is he went to like, I think it was like four different countries to do these things. So by the time they caught up with him in one country, he went to another country and did it. And then when he, they caught up with him there, he went to another country and did it. But nobody knew what was happening in all the other countries. Like when they were arguing about his, his problems in Sweden, they said, uh, well, this is really terrible what, what happened here. And they said, but you never asked, did it happen anywhere else? And then they gave the statistics from other countries, and it turned out 12 people had died with these fake tracheas put in them. All it was was a piece of plastic, basically, they put in, and then he bathed it in stem cells. What? Even I would know that that wouldn't stem work. Stem cells are not going to live on plastic. That's right. <clears throat> you know. They need nutrition. And, they need oxygen. Yeah, and the people that were then, you know, coming to him and allowing him to do it were people who had no other alternative right. they ended yeah. up being guinea pigs that, yeah, that's, that's right. exactly the point they made they were guinea pigs Absolutely. you know and it was they had to hang this guy by his whatever. but i remember this story from years ago when it was going on and hmm. uh, at the time that i first remember seeing it all the networks were doing these stories about how boy there's been a breakthrough in medical science with this new tr artificial trachea blah 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 and and I'm going, thinking to myself, wow, did they have it all wrong? You know, and they were complicit in allowing this guy to continue with what he was doing. Jeez. You know? So. You know, unfortunately, we have somebody on this show that developed a heart product that is working well. Yes, that would be our good that friend Jeff. Jeff. Yeah. 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 So. How many lives have you saved, Jeff? You're muted, Jeff. Huh? No, I don't know. It's, it's kind of a strange number. What do you it's mean a it's a strange number? I mean, don't they come up with some kind of statistic on how many lives it may have saved? Yeah, I mean, I don't know what they are. That's all. You know, it's funny. The medical company's busy. They don't like to tell anybody what they're doing. Yeah, don't, but, they, don't you get a... I mean, you're the inventor. You must get. He wasn't out. the. You weren't the inventor, were you? You were one of yeah, the developers. Yeah, usually the creative people. But the problem is, the company like Johnson and Johnson or somebody like that. Once they, we say, okay, the product looks good. We've done some animal testing. Maybe we did some cadaver testing. And that's it. It's up to them at that point. Um, How much animal well, testing do you have to do on something like this? Because what they were saying in this, in this show and also in the documentary is that it's customary that you have hundreds of tests to make sure that this thing works and doesn't kill the animals that it's put in, right? Well, they, they use animals, live animals, to, to uh, preliminary uh, studies. Yeah. To see that whatever... If it's a valve or whatever that, and what materials are you using it for it, and, and you can do a lot of t testing with uh, with animals. 
yeah. and dogs. And, and sometimes we use animals to save human lives. I mean, they replace heart valves with yes. big, yeah. big heart valves. People would say, uh, well, we don't want to see animals die as a result. But do you want to see people die as a result? You know, I mean... I, ultimately, I, when, when they're useful, yeah. I mean, I have, I have a, two different valves inside that are... Uh, one's from a cow and... From a what? A cow. Oh, a cow. I thought you said an owl. <laughs> no, no. Owl. And the other one is... What? A what pig? Pig valve? Yeah, what's the other one? Pig. Pig, pig valve. Pig. Yeah. Pig. They use pig valves a lot. Yeah. 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 You know, I, and, I, I, and, and, and do you feel, people, how do you feel about pigs being used for science like this? Because after all, after you take out the valve that you're going to put in somebody else's heart, of course it kills them, but then you eat them. Okay, so. Oh, I know, right. that's very common. You had bacon today. Yeah. That's yeah. Very, how do how do how do the rabbis feel about people getting pig valves? I've heard certain say it's it's an okay deal. Yes, to save lives. Yeah, don't eat it. Don't eat it. Don't yeah. eat it. The well, ones they were all health eat. laws anyway to begin with. Why not? You know, because if you ate if you ate pork in those days, you die. You know, it was yeah. trichinosis. Yeah. And there was no way to solve trichinosis. So, right. you know. Anyway, so I, I, boy, I bet it's really cold out there because I'm sniffling. Is it? Yeah. Well, I hope we're not coming down with COVID again. To be able to say I got it four times would be Relax. ridiculous. Huh? Four times is a charm. What did I you? Know. What did that you? That I hope not. Jesus. I hope. Well, this throwback you get sometimes from uh, Paxlovid, Paxlovid is only a minor one, right? Oh, Just a couple yeah. of days or something, yeah. and then you're good to go again. So That's what I've heard. I don't yeah. have to worry about getting that because I couldn't get a damn doctor to prescribe Paxlovid. Do you know you can get a pharmacist, too? Yeah, well, I, I know a lot more about it now. and I'm, Yeah, if you go to a pharmacist with, uh, I think, some blood tests or something that you had recently or something, they can actually, the pharmacist is allowed to prescribe Paxlovid for you. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I was, I was reading, I was looking that up today. What if I don't have a doctor and whatever? Because I went to, you know, I went to a, you know, what do you call it? The, uh, um, what do they call those clinics? Urgent care. Urgent care. Yeah, and that, uh, that, that I, it, I was in good shape on it. Yeah, mm -hmm. my doctor told me if it ever happens again and I can't get a doctor to prescribe it, just go to emergency. They'll take care of it. Emergency? Yeah. Or you can just go to your local drugstore, say, what do you need? I got to get Paxlovid. And, yep. and if they'll give you a test. And if you, if you test positive for, for uh, COVID-19, they will give you the Paxlovid. So, hmm. you know, something to think about. I didn't know that. But then again, it was just as easy for me to go to the surgeon care and get a prescription mm. and, you know, have called in and everything like that, rather than having to deal with the pharmacist and argue with them and uh, show them all my papers and what do you need, and then i got to go home and get it, and, you know, whatever. Anyway, mm -hmm. hey, listen, we'll little theme time here. Okay. I know you can't hear it, but you're lucky. It's not, not great music. Anyway, hey, uh, you know, Charlie, it's always good having you here. I always say that, and I mean it sincerely. And, and, you, and most of the time, you are here. So, you know, that's wonderful. Thank you. Thank you to Jeff. Jeff, nice talking with you, too. And, thank you. And thank you for your service and saving people's lives with your heart products. Yeah, you know. poor pig. And by the way, also thank you from the pharmaceutical company that made a fortune off of them. Uh, and uh, 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 Brian Neary, gosh, good talking to you too. You, I'm, and, and he's doing the show tonight at great risk to his relationship with his girlfriend <laughs> because he's not out. It's like what time is it in California right now? It's raining though here. It's raining. Nine o'clock. That's, nine that's, that's, yeah. that's my excuse. It's raining. Yeah, but he could he could have just avoided this show tonight and taken her out for a nice Valentine's Day meal. But in lieu of that, he just closed the door and isn't letting her in. My so, friend Jeff said it's against my religion. I see. Okay. And what are you, a devout coward? 
Uh, <laughs> and, 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 anyway. <laughs> And thank you so much to our good friend, Alan, for joining us. Thank you, Alan. Enjoy that. And thanks to all of you out there as well. Let's have everybody wave a big goodbye, and we'll be, give a big wave goodbye at them, okay? There they go, folks. That's our citizen panel. There's going to be a new one forming, like uh, crust on uh, pie, <laughs> a forming next right here. On GabNet with uh, AB Manual and the intersection, and she'll be taking your calls on Skype at GabNet Live. I'll see you again tomorrow night. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? And that I bought her dinner tonight, okay? Okay.